Ahoy, salty dogs. My name is Lenscap. Welcome to the moon. <laughs> Today, uh, we're playing Stationeers. In this episode, I want to work on an air filtration system. And uh, I think I have a plan. I, I think I have a plan. We'll see if it's going to work. Let me quickly lay out my plan um, for what we're going to do here. Let's see. I need one of these as well. All right, so I set up this kind of like test area over here so we can get an idea of what uh, what we want to do. So we're going to have a line in. This is like our dirty pipe, quote unquote, right? So this has all of our um, all of our unfiltered gases in it. And uh, then the plan from here is to filter all of these gases. And to do that, let's see. Uh, we're going to use these kit atmospherics. Um, we need the filtration module specifically. All right, so we're going to come off this pipe um, in each direction into a tank. And I think we'll just use the small tanks. There is a bigger tank, but it's really big. It's way bigger than we're going to need for sure. So I think we'll just use the smaller tank. And I'm still trying to decide, like, the layout that we want to do, because we want, you know, we're underground, right? So we want to make this pretty, sp as space efficient as possible. Let's see, the power port is on that side. And, of course, the data port for the tank is on the opposite side. Of course it is. How could we make this? If we flipped the tank over, that could work if we had the tanks upside down. Hmm. Uh, but then, but then the, the port on the tank is on the wrong side, like it, it should be on the right side from this direction to kind of match up with the output from the atmospherics filter. Um, we could just not read the data in, from the tank, that, I mean, that's fine. We don't necessarily have to know that information. Let's put a tank down here. Um, okay, and then so what we'll do, we'll need to connect the the output from the filter back into the dirty line so that basically the way these filtration units work is it filters everything on the pipe network. We'll talk about pipe networks in just a second and kind of how the pipe networks work because the pipes are a little bit wonky, right? They don't make immediate sense for how they work, um, but anyway, so... This filter checks this pipe network to see if there's whatever gas we filter out of it in there. If there is, uh, then it comes out this side. And if there's not, then everything else comes out this side. There's not exactly a flow to the pipes. Um, gases in a pipe network exist in the entire network um, at a certain pressure. So while there is pressure, there's not flow, right? So you won't see... More O2 on this side than on this side. It's just this pipe has O2 in it, for example. Right, so that's how that works. And then what we want to do is use these filtration units to take the O2 out of this pipe and put it in this tank. Uh, now, we also want to be able to pump it from out of the tank into other parts of our base. So we'll want like a T-junction kind of situation so that we can both hold the O2 in the tank, but also move it around through other areas um, as well. If we do it this way, this is pretty compact. Um, yeah, this is, this is actually not that bad of a system. It's pretty compact. We'll need power cables here. Let me grab some cables just so we can kind of get a good mock-up going on of this. And I should have some cable coils. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so we can use... Uh, let's... Do the cables come from the ceiling, maybe? That might be the easiest way to get everything wired up easily. Because these these cables don't carry data necessarily, so they don't they don't matter. Um, what they do. If you guys can hear cooing, that's my dove. That's my little bird. She's uh, She just flew into my office and is currently resting on my head. <laughs> as I'm recording this video. Um, yeah, so, and this, uh, this is tileable. 
So we should be able to do another atmospherics unit. Let's see, another filtration unit. Right here. And then another, uh, another tank. This bird is so distracting being on my head like this. Uh, another tank right here. And, oh, those can sit closer together than I expected, actually. Hmm. Well, if those tanks can sit that close together, then these atmospheric units, can they be any closer together as well? I'm not sure that they can, actually. Uh, because we still need power, we need pipe, we need cabling, uh, we need pipes and stuff. Let's see if we can move these guys closer together. I just, uh, am doing some, like, designing in my head here before we go dig a hole for this. Right, because I, I want the base to look cool. I want everything to fit correctly, uh, within the base. So we want to make sure that, um, when we tile this stuff, it's not going to cause a huge... That's not a wrench, lens cap. It's not going to cause a huge, like, disparity? I don't know what the right word is. Um, okay, so if we pull out here, yeah, then that's as close together as these units can be. So this, this actually doesn't quite line up, does it? I would like to have these tanks right next to each other like that. That actually would work a little bit better. Let me play around with the design for a second, but the idea is basically we take the six gases filter each one individually into these tanks and then we have like a t-junction or something so that we can utilize those gases as well um, yeah let's see if we can design something a little bit more compact than this alright so here's my next thought this could work um, it it kind of works we've got the central pipe that is like our input that has all of our dirty gases uh, we can do three filters on the on one side three filters on the other side and then our six holding tanks that way. There is enough room for all the pipes uh, this way. Um, the problem I have is if I need to access these, that's actually an air conditioner, not a filter, but it, it doesn't matter. Um, the problem is if I need to access these, I, I can't really walk through this. I don't think that's going to work. Okay, let's try something else. So here's attempt number two, and it's, I don't like to date my content, but uh, this mouse, like, these mouse controls for the inventory now, uh, I didn't think I was going to like it at first, but uh, holy crap, I love this. Uh, it's actually fantastic. Okay, but uh, this is attempt number two, and I'm still not convinced uh, that this is what I want either. I feel like I can get this smaller. I feel like I can get this smaller. This does resolve the issue of not being able to walk in between, although I keep tripping over these pipes. Um, I could just put down floor grating, I guess, to fix that. Like, if I centered this a little better, mm, we could still get it three tiles. It actually would be exactly three tiles wide, which, that's not too bad. Um, three tiles wide, and it'd be probably four tiles long. Because we'd get three tanks on each side, but they're slightly larger than one square, like each each of these like like tiling filtration unit systems um, is slightly larger than one square. So it'd probably be four squares long and three wide. That's not so bad. I think I can do better though. Okay, so here's my next thing. Uh, these frames are not part of the building though we could actually remove these and it would be just fine um i just put them there for like measuring you know so we kind of have an idea of how big things are um i'm doing i did the tanks floating upside down and i thought that was interesting this does give me a nice corridor in between um and then i did the pipes above the filtration units instead of in the floor just because I, I like that. It actually makes it a little bit more compact. It uses more pipes, uh, but it does make it a little bit smaller. It's still three wide, um, but I did manage to get the entire, like, tileable filtration unit inside one block, like one cube. 
So I could actually uh, tile these to be 3x3 three three instead of 3x4. So that's a little bit tighter. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if I could get 2x3 and just use 6 blocks somehow. I'm not sure I'd be able to pull that off, but now that I've done this, maybe if I put these, yeah, if I put these back to back, you know, like instead of across from each other, then I might be able to get it even a little bit smaller. Although it's nice to have this maintenance corridor where I can access both sides. It's just a little bit more convenient. I want to play with it some more, but this is a really decent design, I think. Uh, we've got wires running to everything. I could even hook up the data ports on these filtration units. And then if I ran up uh, somewhere, which I could probably find a spot, maybe there would go, yeah. I could run up right here behind this pipe. And then uh, in the ceiling, I could hook into the tanks as well if I wanted to measure, like, some readout from the tank. It'd be nice to be able to put monitors uh, that would tell me how much pressure is in the tanks. That would be good. That would be useful as well. Um, I want to I wanna keep trying at this. I, I feel like we're so close. We're almost to what I want. This is really close, uh, but I think I can still do even better than this. So if you stack the tanks on top of the filtration units, it's a lot more simple. But I don't like this as much. So I think what I'm going to do is this, which is what we had in the cookie. Calm down. That's my bird. Oh my god, this bird's driving me nuts. Okay, but I think I'm, what we're going to do is this. Which is similar to the last clip, except I rotated the tank 90 degrees, which saves us like 17 pieces of pipe. Okay, maybe not that many, but it saves us a ton of pipes. And we can also wire in the sensor on the tank really easily uh, with this method. It fits in almost one tile, uh, but it gives us a tile to walk through the middle of. And uh, yeah, so I think this is this is the route we want to go. So the next thing we should do is dig a hole in our base to put it in. Ha! <laughs> you thought it'd be as easy as, oh, we'll just dig a hole and put in some stuff. Of course it's not. Don't you know what game this is? This is Stationeers. <laughs> Nothing is easy in this game at all. Okay, so We've got to figure out the power situation for this room before we install these things, right? Because before we can have things, we have to make sure they have enough power. Um, I want to start with two battery kits in this room. I think that's going to be enough power. I um, I hope that's going to be enough power. I, I, I think it'll work, though. I think we can make that work. Um, there are a couple different ways we can wire these up, but I would like, my preference is to wire them in parallel with each other. Um, the problem we run into if we try and do it in parallel is how do we go about doing it? You know, actually, I just had a, I just had a thought. We could maybe even dig out a little bit further and wire them up from the from one side like this here let's let's see if we can do this real quick uh i want to get some frames on my hot bar or in my hand i guess so that i can um kind of measure with them you know it's the frames are like uh like a, like the grid for the game right so we want to make sure that we're mostly on the grid and then kind of what we can do is just build this little like access right here maybe we have like a door or something to our power system, and then this box can be where all the power wiring and and, uh, and stuff is. That kind of makes the most sense. All right, so let's throw this on the ground. Let's grab uh, our tool and pull these apart, um, and then we'll kind of adjust where they go. But first, let's see. How do we want to run this cable, though? Just down the side like that? That kind of works. How do we have the batteries facing? Uh, I would like to be able to see them. And what if we need to add more batteries here? I'm considering doing something like, 
You know what? If we place the batteries... Can I... I can't really stack them very well, can I? But if I place them like this... Uh, am I able then to remove the frame? Oh. Okay. Well, that gives me an idea for uh, for a better way to do this then. Okay, so we'll do that. And let's think. If we access from this side, we can put something here like um, like maybe one of these floor grates. Let's go grab one actually, because I, I have just the shape in mind for this. Um, there's a floor grate that's similar to the one we used in the airlock that I think would work pretty well for this. Uh, I've got some right here. Um, it's got like a viewing window in it or something like that. I think that would be an interesting floor grate to use in this situation. So if we do like... Let's see. I was thinking this one. If we do like that. And then we kind of preserve our industrial look and feel. And I think that works pretty well. We can just come around here and we can take a peek at our batteries. Um, do the sides look different? Oh, that side looks way better. Okay, let's uh, let's let's pull this off then and swap it around. I guess I didn't need both, but I will eventually um, in this building, so in this room. So we may as well. So let's just swap this around, make sure we pick the right one. Uh, can we rotate it so that it's maybe... Yeah, that's pretty good. Well, now, if we're going to do this, <laughs> should we turn it so that we can see the battery? Like, the charge through this grate. And then we wouldn't even need this, like, hole area right here. And we could put, like, a power transformer on this wall if we left the frame up. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, so I have a save just before I dug this out. I'm actually going to reload that save so we can get the earth back here. Because uh, there's no way to refill. And then I'm going to try a couple of different ways to set this up. See if we can find something that, that looks and feels pretty cool. Alright, so there are the batteries wired up in the back. Let's turn them on. Uh, there's no power coming in. I'm still a little bit unsure about the way I've decided to do the power, to be honest, in this station. Uh, I'm... I was planning on doing, like, backups to each individual room has its own power bank. I think I'm still going to do that. Um, that does make the most sense. But I think what I want to do is have the, um, have the individual rooms maybe also running off a specific... Um, what am I trying to say? Like maybe maybe have a, like a general battery bank as well as each individual room having their own specific battery bank. Um, and that way we can kind of get a little bit more oomph, you know, out of our rooms here. Um, okay, from here. Why did I wire those two in the front? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So they can, so it can go from this into the transformer. And then let's get our transformer to rotate. I want it this way. And where do we want it? Just right here is probably fine. We could put it on this wall. But I think right here is going to be the best place. Okay, so let's put that there. And then we need to grab our heavy cable. I'm almost done with the cabling here. So we can grab our heavy cable. That's going to go along the wall here and then up and then a straight cable. And then out of this we'll use regular cable uh, and we'll limit this so that it won't burn out the cable. I think that's the plan there. All right, now the floor grating. Let's see if we can get this to work. It's such like a tight enclosed area right here that uh, it doesn't quite... Sometimes things don't quite work. Okay, I do like that, but uh, I want to remove this piece of frame first. Okay, and then let's see if this looks... How's this? Yeah, that's good. And then we can look through here and we'll be able to see the lights from the batteries when we look in. That's nice. That's really nice. 
So I was thinking about it and I thought it would make more sense to have the batteries on this side as we walked in. It makes it a little bit of a tight entrance into this room. Um, ignore this yellow wall. It won't be yellow forever. I think uh, it makes a little more sense to have it right here. Yeah, it makes it a little bit tight, but um, the power line comes in right there. So why not have the batteries like right as we walk in? Um, I switched up the grating. I thought this looked a little better. And then on this side, we can have maybe some consoles or something or, ooh, you know what? We could put our air tank refill station right here. That would make sense right as we come inside. Or maybe we put that right here in this space. Decisions, decisions, who knows, who knows, I'm not sure what we want there. Um, this block actually has to be solid uh, because we want each room individually to be airtight. And there's a little gap right here if that room, if that, uh, if that wall's not solid. And then we can start our filtration here. So we'll do three on this side, we'll have a, another cube, like another space here, and then we'll do three more on this side, that'll give us all six gases. And then if I need to expand further, if I want to keep any mixes, I can go this way and then make this kind of like a like an L-shaped room. Um, I think that's a good uh, a good way to work it out. Let's go ahead and get our dirty line installed and maybe we'll do these three filtration units. Um, I'm about out of time for the episode. I've been at this for literally like five or six hours today. Usually, <laughs> usually videos don't take this long to produce, but I, I had to do a lot of playing around with this stuff, and uh, yeah, there was a lot in this one. So I'm going to copy this design a few times down there, and I don't know that we'll get, we definitely won't get gases in the thing yet. We still don't have power to the room yet. But we might be able to set up a few of these, like, filtration units. Alright, just this last little bit of cabling. Hmm, let's see. So I'm trying to work my cabling around the, like, exposed rocks and stuff. I, I feel like that's going to be a cool effect. Um, just the last little bit of cabling, though, and then... This side, at least, is is pretty much ready to go. I don't have labels or anything. I don't have any of the um, four-way corner. No, we just want a junction. I don't have any of the filters in. I don't have anything painted. Um, I'm probably going to do the return line is gray um, for, like, our gray gases or whatever. And then I'll probably paint... Um, I may not paint the filters, but I'll definitely paint the storage tanks based on what colors the filters are. Ooh, we're seeing the sun through the wall. That's kind of bizarre. If we run up to the top, uh, I think I have... Do I have a filter down here? I do. So here's the water filter. Um, you can see it's blue. So we'll paint whatever storage box water goes in, or whatever storage box, whatever storage tank water goes in, obviously we'll paint blue. And then uh, I think oxygen is white, and uh, they're all different colors for everything. Um, we'll probably paint the output pipes, like the pure O2 pipes, the same color as the, um, as the tank. In this case, O2 would be white, so we'll have a white pipe that's pure O2. And then we'll have, you know, like the water pipe will be blue and, and stuff like that. Um, so that would be this pipe. Or like if this one's nitrogen, I think nitrogen is green. So this pipe would be green and this tank would be green. Uh, carbon dioxide is, I don't remember what color it is. Um, but we would, yeah, you get the idea. Um, anyway, so that's the air filtration room. I think between episodes, I'll probably do this side as well. It actually, once we got it all going, it wasn't that tough to get everything together like this. And uh, I think this is a pretty cool looking room, actually. And it's going to be really neat once we have a bunch of pipes sneaking through the ceiling and stuff. Um, I think we'll probably run pipes. It's going to be interesting getting the actual atmosphere mix, because I think what I'd like to do is get... Maybe we'll have another station that is mixed um, atmosphere, so our whatever ratio of nitrogen, hydro, nitrogen, oxygen, and uh, carbon dioxide we want as our breathable atmosphere. We'll just pump that into its own tank. And that way we only have to run one pipe instead of three uh, to, get, to get our air throughout the base. 
But uh, well, I guess we'd have to run two because we need a return pipe as well. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. It was a little bit technical and a little bit like all over the place, right? But we got uh, an atmospherics room designed at least and partially installed. And, uh, and I'll work on this a little bit more. But uh, until next time, stay tuned.